Hi, I'm here with Kelly Ahuja from Cisco. We're here to talk about small cells. Hi there. How are you, Dan? Good, thank you. Great. So, what uh, do you see Cisco's position in the small cell market broadly as at the moment? That's great. Uh, so, uh, Dan, we've done extremely well when it comes to certain types of small cells. So, for example, uh, we consider unlicensed small cells or unlicensed Wi-Fi deployments as a small cell does as well because they're deployed everywhere in indoor mm -hmm. locations, outdoor locations, and venues, etc. And we're one of the market leaders when it comes to deploying those types of small cells in the industry. We also have uh, the world's largest deployment of residential FEMTO, UMTS deployment uh, cells in the world. Uh, so I feel mm -hmm. we're doing really good in terms of 3G or UMTS as well as Wi-Fi small cells. And when you think of the most kind of crucial product aspects of, of your current lineup? Well, uh, there's a few things, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to residential small cells uh, in, in terms of FEMTO area, the biggest uh, breath that we bring to the carriers is really our ability to take a, uh, an access point combine it with our entire core network solution, our back-end solution, where it's a zero-touch provisioning capability for the mm -hmm. SPs that we can provide. Very, very powerful, and the operator that uses it is very uh, thankful for mm -hmm. doing that. And actually helps them uh, reduce their drop call rates in the networks as well. Uh, in the unlicensed space, or the Wi-Fi space, we have a lot of fundamental technology that we've built. Everything from uh, the equivalent of uh, self-organizing network capability, where you have multiple hotspots, multiple access points that need to organize themselves. Uh, the ability to do radio interference, RF interference management, uh, when you do have a microwave come on, or somebody else turns something on, we can actually survive those things built in into the capabilities. Combine that with our back-end technologies, again, in the Wi-Fi world, where we can take AAA servers, policy, et cetera, and pull it all together and make that zero-touch provisioning that I talked about in residential femto cells also apply in the area of uh, Wi-Fi is great. The third thing is really bringing these two together from a, a Wi-Fi as well as a licensed network, a macro network, and really mm -hmm. bringing them together into the same core network. And that integration part, we're also very strong. Okay. And obviously, we're getting to the phase where carriers look like they're going to start to deploy LTE small cells. What do you think is going to change when, when that happens? Well, there's a lot of talk about LTE small cells, but not just LTE small cells. The operators are looking for multi-mode uh, okay. small cells, right? Things that might do LTE and Wi-Fi and 3G as well. Uh, and uh, those are still in the early stages of discussions and deployments. There's a lot of uh, discussions about trials and testing that's going to continue for the next little while, and then deployments will likely start happening. Most operators are talking about the next 12 to 18 months in terms of their window for rolling out uh, these deployments. Now, uh, what's interesting in terms of requirements requirements for these, uh, not that much more than, than perhaps maybe the power level on the radio side, depending upon what location these cells are deployed in, the number of users that they need to uh, be able to handle, depending again upon the deployment scenario where they put mm -hmm. these, these cells in, uh, and other things around uh, you know, perhaps how these small cells fit into the macro network uh, as well. So those are the kind of requirements that typically pop up. Now, to get very current for a moment, we're in Chicago, we're looking at the uh, remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Sandy, or whatever they are actually calling it right now, um, kind of coming out of the lake shore. Um, I wondered how small cells and these kind of these micro cell situations, how you think they react to that kind of weather situation? Well, it's really situation dependent, right? So, for example, um, the, uh, the, the uh, tsunami that hit Japan uh, last year uh, caused some massive damage in the country on the infrastructure side. Right. Uh, and the operators in that country really thought about uh, two possible approaches, right? And they've still been kind of w walking through these. One is to deploy supercells where they actually have lesser number of nodes that are providing much broader coverage. And the second one is really how do they provide disaster recovery in that scenario by maybe even looking at small cell deployments where you can limit the exposure down. So if you think about uh, my team that's actually currently uh, either in uh, the Boston area, New England area, or New Jersey, mm -hmm. most of them are stuck at home. Right. Now, if they have a macro tower outage in their region or a backhaul outage for that macro tower, uh, maybe the infrastructure inside the home where there's an indoor small cell right. that is providing them cell phone coverage uh, for voice coverage, but also for data using their broadband connection could be a, a saving grace, perhaps. Right, right. right. So small cells could perhaps be a good thing in that scenario as well. Right, it's all situational. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for your time.